For my first spotlight, I had to start with the master of the modern age in comic book illustration and pencil work, and a personal favourite of mine, Jim Lee. Very few would disagree that this artist is one of the modern greats, with a signature style that is easily recognisable even to those who are new to the world of comic books. Although personally I didn't discover his work until I picked up his first issue of Fantastic Four Heroes Reborn, I'm going to look at his work from the beginning of his career, before I was enjoying it on a regular basis. Although a staple of the DC team as their chief creative director, Jim's career and first big break came in the industry from Marvel in the late 80s. During this period, he illustrated two books, Alpha Flight and later The Punisher War Journal. At this point, Jim's work was already earning him a small but loyal following of fans, but wouldn't be until his work on the Uncanny X-Men that his pencils would become a household name. During his time on the X-Men series, he was beginning to cement his signature style, and although it would undergo continued refinement in later years, the foundations regarding his aesthetic and proportions were already there. The next stage in the artist's career coincides with the period in which I personally stopped reading and following comic books, and unfortunately coincides with one of the most interesting developments. Up until that point, the two major names in the comic book world were of course Marvel and DC. However, in 1992, a group of artists, which included Jim Lee, broke away from these and formed a new publisher, Image Comics. Under this brand, artists explored the characters and themes they wanted to do, and in doing so, Jim brought the Wildcats team to life. The story focused on two battling alien races, each with a variety of powers and abilities, and in that sense resembled an ensembler of powered beings that Jim had become used to drawing when on the X-Men book. It wasn't until 1992 that my personal discovery of Jim's work would begin, walking into my Backstreet's independent comic book shop, perusing the shelves for that week's releases and finding issue one of Fantastic Four Heroes Reborn. I remember seeing the cover art for this series and being completely blown away, immediately falling in love with Jim Lee's work and making a point to follow it going forward. Shortly after a brief return to Marvel, Jim moved to DC Comics in the late 90s, which arguably produced some of his most memorable and iconic works. Although working consistently, it was Hush in 2002, which was his first watershed moment for me in DC. Once again, Jim's pencil work had evolved and he had turned his talents to illustrating the Bat Family as well as Batman's extensive Rhodes Gallery and the iconic Superman, stamping his style on all of these characters. 2004 saw the artist pencil the For Tomorrow title for Superman. Up until this point, I hadn't had much interest in this character. Finding his power sets made any proposed Jeopardy unbelievable. Nevertheless, with Jim's work seducing me once again, I picked up the book and gave it a read. In the story, Superman struggles with the limitations of his powers, having failed to save the vanishing of a number of people. During the book, symbology of God is explored, particularly when the character confides and opens up to a priest. These themes were later explored in films such as Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, and it's clear that the work of Jim's illustrations were drawn upon for these. In 2005 began my favourite interpretation of The Batman by Frank Miller and once again illustrated by Jim. This new alternative retelling explored a much darker and unforgiving Caped Crusader, all viewed through the eyes of his newly recruited 12-year-old boy wonder, Dick Grayson. In this series, Batman shows limited sympathy to the new orphan, choosing to torture the 12-year-old, which included making him eat rats for sustenance, all with the end goal of making him a finely tuned warrior, able to survive any situation. The intense story is beautifully complemented by Jim's work, with every page and panel being an absolute joy to drink in. Of course, these are the highlights for me in Jim's career. However, as an artist, he has drawn so many characters and continues to do so. His work has also been influential on the big screen, with the artist designing the DC opening, which featured before The Batman Begins, and storyboarding Zack Snyder's Justice League, and producing promotional material for the up-and-coming The Batman. Thankfully, this artist shows no signs of slowing down. I hope we as a community can continue to enjoy more of his works for a long time to come. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then please like the video because it helps us out a lot. If you want to see more, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you click the bell icon, you'll get an update every time a new episode goes live. I've been Lionel, this has been the Comic Book Corner, and I'll catch you on the next episode.